Welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how I went from this image to this image in Photoshop. Alright guys, my name is Philip and let's jump right into Photoshop. Now in this particular case I'm going to take this rather beautiful landscape already. I'm going to turn it into something more colorful. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add some patches, colorful patches in the foreground here, also in the background on the left hand side, and wherever I have the feeling that it's necessary. For that I'm going to start off by making a copy of my background layer by hitting Command and J on the keyboard. That's just in case I mess something up, I always have something to go back to. Awesome. Once I have done that I'm going to create a simple hue saturation layer Saturation layer, yes, a hue saturation layer on the right hand side here. I'm going to drag the hue slider a little bit towards the right, uh, the left, and choose something like maybe something like that. It's not bad. Usually, you could also go ahead and select the color range and make sure that you're only changing the, the color of the grass itself. In my case, because I want to just splatter color around, it's not really necessary. So, next step, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Command and I on the keyboard. It'll make the layer masks on, uh, the layer mask on that hue saturation layer black. And now with a white brush in the opacity of 30%, say, I can go ahead and bring the color through wherever I feel like. And in my case, I do feel like it should be just around here. Okay, that's not bad. Also, I'm going to make my brush a bit smaller, go in just a tiny bit, and bring it further just alongside this little river here. Awesome. I'm going to create another hue adjustment layer, a uh, hue adjustment layer, <laughs> hue saturation layer, and do the same thing and just vary the color slightly. Do something maybe rather like that, just, just a little bit more brown instead of red. I'm going to hit Command and I once more, and with my brush, I'm just going to bring it through in the areas where I feel like it could just, you know, make a nice color composition. Maybe over here. Okay, that's not bad. Cool, now that we have this color here, I mean, for now it's not looking awesome, but it will later when we create a little bit of an autumn effect. Now let's continue and bring this color through on different places as well, so a little bit on the left-hand side here. And why don't we zoom in and also bring it into these bushes back here. So I'm just going to go ahead and distribute these colors, essentially, or these colors, and distribute them through the image where I think they would potentially look quite nice. And once I'm done, I'll bring you back in a moment. And we are back and I'm done with distributing the color through the image. Now I'm still obviously not done with the color. Let me just show you the original file I have here. If you have a look at the lower left, lower right hand corner here, you can see that I have worked with tons of curves, adjustments and hue saturation layers. And that's only for the reason that I'm always very undecided when it comes to color. For now, I can take that. I'm, I'm happy with that. That's a cool. Um, so what we're going to do now, we are going to create a so-called stamp visible, which essentially copies everything that is visible onto a new layer. And you can do this by hitting Command, Alt, Shift and E, these keys on your keyboard, and you have a new layer as I have here now in the lower right hand corner with all information that we had prior uh, on that layer. Right. Awesome. Now, what we can do with this, we can add a soft origin effect, and this is going to intensify the colors we have in the image for that. Click, uh, click on the blend mode right here and go down to, let's try soft light. Once I have done that, I'm going to go down to filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. And here you can experiment a little bit. Uh, like, I mean, the higher you go with the, the blur, the, well, more interesting is the effect up to a certain extent. But for me, I'm just going to stick around somewhere here, maybe. Yeah, I don't think, I like it here. Let's stay here. Here's cool. Awesome. I'm going to hit OK. And if I switch it on or off, you can definitely see there's a big difference in the before and after. And that the colors are also quite intensified when it comes to, you know, how, how strong they shine into your face place. Awesome. Once I have done that, now I just realized that the red in the lower right hand corner of the image is a little bit too intense. But we can adjust that. For that, I'm just going to create another hue saturation layer and drag the hue slider a little bit towards actually the left this time to add a little bit more yellow. Awesome. Once I have done that, I'm going to hit Command and I once more to hide the effect. And with a nice and large brush and an opacity of, say, 20%, I'm going to bring a bit of that yellow in here, so just that it's not that shiny red, right? And I kind of like this kind of yellow, especially because we're going to also mirror it into the sky, which is going to be awesome. Okay, now we have done that. Let's actually work on that sky. Why wouldn't we? Maybe actually before we do that, one step after another, Philip, we're going to quickly create a quick curve adjustment layer and just drag the curve down a little bit. I just want to darken down the edges of the image, just a tiny bit, not even too much, something like that. I'm going to hit Command and I and hide the effect and with a nice large brush and an opacity of, mm, with a nice large, mm, I said with a nice large brush and an opacity of 30%, I'm just going to go through and go over the edges, 
just to make them a little bit darker. It's just like that. That's not bad. I want to have the attention to be essentially in the center of the image where this little path is, right? Okay, let's do that. Let's continue to just bring it in on the edges, just like that, until we are happy, such as now. Now is not bad. Okay, now we can get some color into the sky. For that, I'm going to create a new layer, hitting Command, Alt, Shift, and N on my keyboard. And on that, I can just draw color. For that, I'm going to change the blend mode from normal down to color. And with a brush and an opacity of, mm, getting ahead of ourselves here, with a brush and an opacity of, say, 40%, maybe, we can always adjust it later, of course, I'm going to pick a color which is already in the image. Something like this nice, nice, I don't even know, something like that, maybe. Let's see how that would look. That could work. Let's try. Let's see how, how that looks once we have put it in. So I'm going to decrease the, uh, the size of my brush just a little bit. I'm going to start randomly painting in the color. Okay. I don't have to be very clean right now because we are going to adjust later where the color will be visible and where it wouldn't be visible. So for now, I'll just bring it in roughly in the areas where I think it might look good. And I think something like that will actually not look bad in the end. You never know. you got to do it and then come back and check it, I suppose. Okay, once we have done that, what I'll do, I'll double click on that layer and here I can adjust where the layer is visible, so the layer with the color, where the color is visible depending on where the image itself is brighter or darker. And I can adjust this using the little slider down here. So if I hold Alt, for example, and drag this little half of the thing here towards the right, you can see that the effect is taken out essentially of the dark areas. So I just want to make sure that I perfectly blend uh, one into the other so that it doesn't look like it's just painted in, right? So maybe something like this wouldn't be bad. What I'll do now, I hit OK, create a layer mask on the layer with the color, and I'll just go over with a black brush, so I'm going to hide the effect essentially. I'm going to hide it from the areas where I don't think it looks very natural, right? So I'm just going to make sure that we start off with a little bit of color and then get, well, essentially stronger and stronger on the colors as we go along. And I'm going to do this a couple of times, and I'm also going to vary with my colors every now and again just to make sure it looks kind of natural at least, and well, just beautiful, I suppose. So I'm going to play with this a little bit, and I'll bring it back once I'm done. Okay, so I have now put some color in, and while it looks a little bit pink-ish, uh, that's of course not the end goal, right? I just want to see how it looks and how the color distribution in general, so if there is color, how it looks. Um, now, before I continue, I want to actually add a little bit more of a light source right there, right? And for that, I'm going to create another stamp visible by hitting Command, Alt, Shift, and E on my keyboard. And once I have done that, I'm going to go up to Filter, Render, and then down to Lighting Effects. Now, here you can put essentially a light source in your image, which is pretty cool and pretty awesome because you have like full control how large this light source has to be, how strong it is, and all sorts of different things. Uh, for me, I'm just going to have a really tiny one. Just something like that, maybe. I'm going to put it just, just somewhere here, maybe. And I also want to make sure that the intensity is low enough, just ever so slightly, so just that the area is brightened up generally. I don't want to start blowing out my clouds or something like that. I just want to make sure that it looks like there is an actual light source right there, right? So let's see. We could do something like that, I suppose. How does it look if we change our ambience a little bit? And then instead go down with the the intensity just a bit more to something like maybe something like this will not look bad. Okay, awesome. Once I'm happy with this, I'm just gonna hit OK and wait a moment and it's gonna think about it and put the light source into this particular image. Now let's have a look at the before and after. You see it's a very slight effect, especially just in the distance, but it's gonna make the the whole scene just complete, right? And now that I know how the scene will actually look with the light back there. I can start now to play with the colors a bit more. So I have some color in the cloud, so now I can take hue saturation layers and I can just start playing around with the hue and make things maybe instead a little bit more yellow because it looks a bit more natural. For example, right? So I can make that small, hit Command and I on the keyboard, and wherever I think it's a little bit too pink <laughs> with a brush and an opacity of 30%, I can just start and get the, the actual nicer yellowish, reddish, brownish color through, right? Just that it looks a little bit more than the actual grass here in the front. Cool. So I'm going to do this, and I might even intensify it a little bit. And once I'm done, well, you shall be with me once more. Okay, so I can live with the colors we're having right now, but what we have to do definitely is to darken down the sky and therefore the clouds just a tiny notch. Because for now, it doesn't really, I don't know, fit together, fit together with the landscape, I think. So let's just do that. Grab a little curve adjustment layer and bring it down. 
to something like maybe something like that. I'm going to invert that hitting command and I in the keyboard and with a nice brush which is relatively large I suppose and an opacity of 20% I'll just bring through that darkness in these clouds here. Okay I'm just going to continue although until I have the feeling okay that looks doesn't look bad. Awesome. And with this particular layer, with the Curve Adjustment layer which darkens stuff down, I can also once more just go around my image and make sure that the edges of the image are as dark as I want them to be. I can also darken down some of these mid-tree areas right here. They don't really give us much in that sense. And why not also just darken down this area on top here just a little bit as well. Okay, so that this area is jumping out just a tiny bit more. Awesome. Once we have done that, and once we have the feeling that we are kind of happy with where we are, we can, of course, if we wanted to, again, once more play around with colors. But uh, I'm going to leave it at nearly at this point. I'm going to put it essentially here. And let me just adjust that color a little bit to something like rather like that. Yeah, I like that. That doesn't look bad at all. Awesome. So now that I'm kind of happy with the color in the sky, there is not much more to do for this particular image. We can sharpen and all these kind of things. But more importantly, if I zoom into the, where are they, into the clouds, I have certain issues. And these, these issues arise from, this was a handheld HDR image, right? So it's a combination of three pictures, essentially. And I did apparently move a lot. And it was actually quite dark on the day. Therefore, I have tons of noise. And it's just really, really annoying. So I have a very blurry sky. Of course, I have a very blurry image in general, unfortunately. There's not much I can do about that. But I have some spots where I have random colorly pixels. I'm not sure if you can zoom this, if I uh, see this. If I zoom in far enough, let me do something like that maybe, you can definitely see it's not homogeneous whatsoever. So let me try to first denoise a little bit and see how that, uh, how that you know, helps the situation. And then also we're going to try to get a more homogeneous color into the sky so that these kind of weirdly purple pixels are not in there anymore. For that... As usual, I'm going to create a stamp visible first, hitting Command, Alt, Shift, and E on my keyboard. And now I have a layer with the whole image on it, essentially, which is cool. Let's go to Filter and then Camera, Raw Filter. And once I'm there, I'm going to go over, once I'm there, one day, here we are. I'm going to go over to the Details section. Here, I'm going to increase the slider for the noise reduction. And just to make sure, I'm going to just drag it, drag it somewhere halfway, maybe somewhere like this. And now I'm going to zoom into the actual clouds. Now, how far do we should we zoom in? I suppose something like 200% and we see the most. Awesome. So let's have a look at a normal uh, at an area where there is a high contrast. Something like maybe something like this area here is not bad. Awesome. Let's increase the noise reduction a little bit more. Let's decrease the luminance detail a little bit more and now we shouldn't hopefully have much noise left in the image. Maybe a little bit up here, but actually that's not too bad. I can live with this. It doesn't have to be, you know, super even surface. Now I'm going to go back to the, you know, the start point essentially and zoom out a little bit to something like that. I'm going to increase my clarity slider from the center towards the right. And I'm just attempting to bring back some of the details we will, we're essentially losing when we sharpen the image, right? Also, uh, not sharpen, when we, sorry, remove the noise. Here we go. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to let Photoshop think for a second, and here we go. Now, if we have a look at the before and after, it gives a little bit more contrast into the clouds, and actually the whole image, which is kind of cool. But if I go in now to something like that, if I switch it on or off, we definitely see a nice reduction in what was before a lot of noise, right? That's kind of cool. Let's zoom in a little bit more. Yeah, I'm a big fan of that. That looks way better already. And it looks like in this particular processing here, I don't even have these colorly patches in there, which is also quite nice. However, just in case you ever get them, because there is a little bit of a color patch left here, I'm just gonna, you know, theoretically at least, show you how to do it. So first, this particular adjustment we have just done shouldn't be everywhere, so let's make sure we only have it in the sky. And for that, let me just take my pen in the correct hand here. Here we are. For that, I'm gonna create a layer mask on that layer where we have just, you know, decreased the noise and everything. I'm going to take a nice large brush, invert that layer mask by hitting Command and I, therefore hiding the adjustment. And with a brush and an opacity of 40%, I'm just going to start brushing it through into the sky. And once I look at my layer mask and the area is completely white, I'm quite happy with that already. That means we just have the nice reduction in the sky now. Awesome. If we have color patches or pixely, strange, colorful, you know, areas in the sky, which I had somewhere over here, 
Uh, where was it? Where were you? Something like that. There's a bit. Cool. What we can do is we can create a, the stamp visible once more. Command, Alt, Shift, and E on the keyboard. Change the blend mode from normal down to color. And now with that layer selected, go to filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur. So essentially, it's just going to take the color and blur only the color, right? And I'm going to blur it to something like well, uh, maybe two pixels or something like that. It's not too bad. And once I have done that, if you had these colorful patches before, and there is not a strong enough example for me in this image to show you, which is a pity, but nothing we can change, then this is a way to get rid of them, okay? Maybe I get another chance to show you one day. One day I might be able to. And other than that, there is not much to do in this image. I think we are actually done a lot. Awesome. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. If you did like the video and you haven't already, please do not forget to hit that thumbs up button. And also, if you are new, don't forget to subscribe. It's going to help out greatly. Well, if you have any comments, as usual, pop them down in any comment section, any social media, or just in the blog or the YouTube video. I'm happy to reply as fast as I can. And other than that, I shall see you the next time. Until then, have a good one. Bye!